It is done. The essence of the wolf's heart has banished all traces of cursed blood from the hunters. It is too bad that Zathrian had to die. I... I felt it when he departed. I think he was ready to go. I'm sure he was. It will be difficult to fill Zathrian's shoes. He was our keeper for many centuries, and he will be sorely missed. But I am keeper now. Let me say it officially, then. I hereby swear to uphold the terms of the ancient contract our people formed with the Grey Wardens. Call, and we shall come, with great speed and purpose. And we shall strike at your foes. This I swear. Thank you, Maria. It has been a long time since the Dalish marched to war, but I trust that in the end, we shall make a difference for you. Okay, give him the iron bark. We are working hard to make enough equipment for all of the hunters. Our armaments will be superior to anything else you find on the battlefield. Found some iron bark for you. Truly, let me see. Yes, that is indeed iron bark, and a substantial quantity of it as well. Well done. An agreement is an agreement, and I will craft something from this wood for you. What would you like? A bow, or perhaps a breastplate? Neither. I'm sure your clan needs it more than I do. I must admit I'm surprised to witness such generosity from an outsider. You have my thanks, and the thanks of my clan for this gift. I will not allow your generosity to go without at least some reward. Come, I shall make something of the wood you bring. I've reformed the wood to my will. It is but a small token of our gratitude, but take it with my blessing. All right. You have returned. Is there any chance you have news of Denala? I do. You have news? Have you found her? Are, are you certain? She gave me her scarf. See for yourself. That is her scarf. Where did you find her? What's become of her? She was a werewolf, just as you suspected. So I was right. But what became of her? She died, Athros, but not before she sent her love. She told you that? Yes. That is what she would do. At least she is at peace. Here is the amulet, as I promised. Now I should go and make arrangements. I must mourn my wife as is proper. Dareth Shiro, fare you well. Do uh, no, no, completed quests, no current quests. Tenerum Unbound. Interesting. Go. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do actually before running into Denim. Oh, we're making force. What am I doing? I need to leave. <laughs> in the wrong direction. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up everybody's little like side quests. I figured out what happened with Liliana. Apparently, hers is bugged. So there's a suggested way of fixing it, so I can continue with her dialogue. And also from there gain her side quest. But uh, it's something I gotta attempt. I'm not even sure if it'll work. And of course, gonna try and slay the High Dragon, which, if it's anything like the first time I fought Flemeth, may end horribly wrong. But hey, you'll see. And then we will continue on to Denerim and towards the final confrontation.
So I need to go in the opposite direction of where I was just at. Most do not feel the same way. Oh, what do they know? They're just jealous. The Maker gives you magic. You must use it. You do it so effortlessly. It's like breathing for you. I wish I had such talent. But you do. You have your music, your dances. You are more graceful than anyone I've ever met. I think that perhaps the Maker gives us all magic, but of different sorts. Even Ogren? Ogren is a dwarf. He doesn't really come from the Maker. Oh yes, and that explains it. Everybody comes from the Maker. Everybody. Oh, so we gotta go back to party camp. That is the plan of action. Actually, cutscene. I think it's gonna be the plan of action. Oh no, cool, I did make it here. Thought I was gonna get the cutscene first. Well, let's speak to Cheryl quick, see if I missed any dialogue. I have a question for it, if it will indulge me. It chose to side with Caradon and destroy the Anvil of the Void. I agree with its decision, and yet the Paragon Branca was the reason it ventured into the Deep Roads. Why did it choose to defy her? It could not have known for certain that Caradon would be able to assist it with the dwarves. I was willing to risk it. It was the right thing to do. That was quite the risk. I am pleased that it worked as it did. At any rate, I wanted to thank it. It gave Caradon the end he wanted, and I am pleased to have been a part of it. I will have to think on Caradon's words to me. It was a great deal to absorb. But for now, let us go on. It has occurred to me that I have been... Excuse me. <laughs> this is not easy. It occurs to me that I have been less than charitable with it since it reanimated me. You have good reasons, I think. I have come to realize that it has been... Good to me. You have been good to me, even though you had no control rod to enforce obedience. I have never had one before, so I, I don't know how to thank you for being, you know. A friend? Exactly so. I followed you, expecting to find answers to my questions, but I think I have found something better. I'm honored, Shale. Oh, let us not speak of this awkward bonding moment ever again. To the road. <laughs> I am listening. No, we're good. Let me speak to Morgan real quick. Your desire? I'd like to ask you something? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> no, that's not it. Your desire? I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. We need to discuss us. Discuss away. Nothing, forget about it. I guess not. I could have sworn there was a point to where... We can go further with the speaking of relationships and the whatnot with her. But we'll see if we can actually get her to talk about stuff first before I try the other thing. Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Nope, she's still broke her. Okay. 
Something you need? I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I still got plenty to sell too. Gone, 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 gone. Money, 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 money. No, that's not what I want to do. I was trying to hit start to get her to change what she had equipped. There we go. Do, no, six, no, six. Oh no, Sorrows is definitely much better. On Zevran, however, we have Mage's Eye. Nope. That's gonna be better. Something you need? I'm sure. Oh crap, I'm almost at a hundred gold. Nice. Got plenty of elf root. I just need more flasks and distillation agents. I think. No, I think I'm good actually. Only one way to tell. That's when wins back to the party again. Oh, I think I need concentration agents. Is what it is. Damn, can't even wear your gear yet? That sucks. I'd love for everybody if I can. Alistair. Mm. Damn. Still can't get you upgraded just yet. He's got quite a few people, herbalism, so if I need to make potions, they're around. I should be able to wear it. Yes. Good, good, good. Now he's a true warrior dwarf. The armor of the Legion. 
which means now I can hopefully put Sten in full Blood Dragon armor. Yeah. Looks kind of weird seeing him in it, but so be it. Shell doesn't need any of that. Damn. Well, that's re effects received. You got your drink. Guess we'll give it to you. That'll work. Something you need? I'm sure. I'm. It's a lot of stuff. New books by chance. Oh, it was worth a shot. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Nope. Alright, I need to give her some crappy gifts. Where's the crappy gifts? Shove. The thoughtful gifts, they do fairly well. I guess thoughtful gift from Rotten Onion would be it. I just wasted three gold. Let's hope this works. Why, thank you so much. Why, thank you so much. Why, thank you so much. I think that should be good. Something I can help with? They talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? No, I guess it still didn't work. Why, 
thank you so much. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Ah, I think we fixed it. What was life like in the Chainery Cloister? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. Condescending? How so? When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. I prefer your ideas to the ideas of the Chantry. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in Lord Ring's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? You just don't seem to belong in the cloister. Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. What did you do before that? I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I... I'm reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died, and this wise elven woman comforted me, and told me that we shouldn't fear death, or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. That is comforting. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. Where did all these instruments come from? No, she has invisible back, of course.
What a beautiful zingy voice to be heard. Oh, wait. Oh, there you go. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. You're a traveling minstrel. Do you have any tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Tell me about the Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Know any stories from Orlais? Of course, Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Orlais. Go ahead. As you know, that sounds interesting. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Continue, please. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Go on. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. That's terrible. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. Do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? I met Flemeth. I should know. Flemeth? Morgan's mother was called Flemeth. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she the Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth. Demon touched, 
who dwells in the mists. She didn't really introduce herself as such. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Tell me the whole story. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. What happened then? Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyever, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle ran red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. There's another story I wanted to hear. Which one? Do you know anything about the Dalish? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in the land of their own. It didn't last. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The chantry says the elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Vinter. During the exalted march of the dales, the elven cities were sacked, and the elven state completely dissolved. Some of the elves bitterly accepted their fates, and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. They were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Let's just move on. At this point, now we can go ahead and butter her up with some gifts. Why, thank you so much. 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 
No, that won't work. Why, thank you so much. Why, thank you so much. Your race is, uh, the race that you choose as well as the class that you choose is going to have different identifiers that are going to have different effects as far as the